Fox's Peter Pan and the Pirates was an animated children's series based on the book Peter Pan by J.M. Barry. It first aired in 1990 on Fox Kids with 65 episodes, much like many other animated series at the time. Despite the fact that the animated Disney movie Peter Pan was one of my favorites around this time, I didn't really give this show much of a chance. Or maybe there was something else on during the time slot that I watched instead. I don't know, but it followed the same main synopsis of the original story more or less, this time giving more focus on the pirates than any of the previous adaptations, hence the pirates actually being acknowledged in the title. So that's a different perspective, and it actually develops characters that would otherwise be in the background. Plus, they got Tim fucking Curry to voice Captain Hook, so I probably should make up for lost time and give this show a look. But for now, I'm going to focus on the video game adaptation of the show, which was released on the NES in 1991 by THQ, and was developed by Equilibrium, a company I've never heard of before. It's a side-scrolling platformer where you play as Peter, of course, and traverse through various stages slaying pirates. Your objective is to rid all the pirates in the level. You actually won't be able to advance to the next stage until you kill every pirate in the level and then access the exit at the end. There's a pirate counter so you know how many are left. Your main weapon is this tiny ass sword, which gets limited range, especially since a lot of these pirates fire projectiles, although thankfully they don't have any rapid attacks. You do get another weapon in select places. These cannonballs can be rolled across the screen to wipe out enemies in one shot, although you want to keep in mind to follow them sometime so the screen can keep up and kill the intended target. Other items to help out are bags of food, which increase your flight meter. Because what kind of Peter Pan game would be worth its salt if Peter couldn't fly? I think it's a little strange that food is the main source of flight fuel and not fairy dust, but then again, maybe this is more aligned with the animated series and I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. Or maybe this is supposed to be fairy dust and the manual is just wrong. But either way, flying will help you overcome obstacles, access hard to reach areas, or in the case of the final stages, actually allow you to get to mandatory areas to advance the stage. So yeah, don't run out of the power of flight. Also, don't fly directly into a wall or platform or get hit by any enemies or projectiles while in mid-air. You'll lose the ability to fly temporarily, and in doing so in certain areas, it can lead to your doom. You also get a health meter, which is measured by a number value. Interesting. To increase this meter, you have to collect treasure chests or make contact with Tinkerbell when she flies by. The final item on the list is this weird block thingy that only awards you points. These aren't important, but go ahead and grab them if you're into that sort of thing. You can also fill up on items in the bonus areas. You'll reach these at the end of each level, or by getting caught in some of these cages that the manual refers to as traps. Here you'll be able to collect chests, flight food, or random block doohickeys. There are no continues, so when you run out of lives, it's over. But they do at least give you checkpoints. But what they don't give you is a good game. I mean, there are no redeeming qualities, the controls are responsive, but stiff as shit, and the method of switching to flying mode is pretty awkward. You have to press A and up at the same time, and then use the D-pad to control yourself. It's just not a fluid transition at all. I would have preferred pressing select or something. I mean, that button gets no use in the game, so why not? The game is visually bland, too. The sprites look like cardboard cutouts with minimal animation, and the level design is so redundant that you won't even notice right away that some of these levels are actually a repeat of a previous level. That's how much everything looks the same. When it actually is the same, you can't even freaking tell. They did change the color palette up on these repeated levels though, like this is an Atari 2600 game or something. Aside from repetition in terms of level design, ultimately there's repetition in terms of gameplay. It's just run around, cut somebody, fly around for a bit, rinse, wash, repeat. I mean, beat-em-ups are often repetitive too, but they usually have upgrades, levels that look different from each other, a variety of enemies, you know, something to break up the monotony a bit. But Peter Pan lacks creativity and ambition all throughout. It really feels like it was just slapped together. 
between the lack of variety, the unimaginative levels, and the stiff combat. It all just makes this feel like an unfinished rough draft. And I wasn't being redundant there. I mean, it feels like the rough draft wasn't even finished. So the first level takes place in the forest, and you've got nine pirates to kill, the first of which you'll meet right away. He walks back and forth and fires a gun at you. Kill him quickly and dodge his bullet if he does fire. You'll have time to react as he aims. Fly over this fire, it shoots flames up into the air, so it's easier to see where the opening is from the air, but you can jump across it too if you want to save yourself on your flight meter. Grab Tinkerbell and the chest on your way down where you'll get sound advice from Wendy Darling. Don't get caught in traps. Thanks. Next you'll meet the fat pirate. He just walks back and forth and this chest right after will lead to a cage falling onto you, which leads to the bonus area. Grab as much shit as you can and don't fall into the pit unless you're done collecting. That's your means of exiting the bonus area. Grab some more trinkets and watch out for this buzzer that swoops in trying to kill you. Take it out, along with the gun pirate that's hanging out in this tree, and wait for the opening to get by the spiked rocks that fall. There's a cannonball you can use to kill the gun pirate up ahead, and right after is another fat pirate. Kill him and scoop up Tinkerbell. To get this treasure chest, you'll need to fly over the pit to grab it, and then fly over another bonfire before encountering another gun pirate in the tree. Watch out for the spider that drops down from above while you're up here. There's another gun pirate and buzzard right after that. Deal with them, hover over the pit for another chest, and there's another gun pirate up ahead that'll just walk off into a pit. Fucking idiot. Otherwise, if he hangs on, roll the cannonball into him. There's another chest over the fire. Fly up to get it as you pass by when there's an opening. There's only one pirate left on your counter at this point, and holy shit, it's Captain Hook. He just wanders back and forth. Take him out, and right after is the exit. Second stage has nine pirates, and takes place in a cave. And right off the bat, you've got a cannon staring in your face that'll fire cannonballs. Although the first one must have a defect because it doesn't fire. Probably to lull you into a false sense of security, because the others do fire. So be ready to jump over the cannonballs when you approach these other cannons. There's a gun pirate up on this ledge over here. Just watch out for the falling rocks along the way and get Tinkerbell. Kill the fat pirate, grab the goodies, and watch out for the falling bullshit as you reach another gun pirate. Roll the cannonball into the gun pirate up ahead and watch the bat that comes flying down towards you. They're a little faster than the buzzards, so be ready to stab them. Right after this cannon is another gun pirate. Get Tinkerbell on your way to wiping him out. Shortly after is another fat pirate. Watch out for the falling rocks and spiders that descend when you're over here. Then roll this cannonball and follow it so the screen can catch up to it bowling over the gun pirate. Watch out for all these rocks that fall and ascend from the pits. Make sure there's an opening so you don't drop to your death. And then take out the gun pirate ahead. Only Captain Hook remains at the end of the road. Wipe him out and it's on to stage 3, which also has 9 pirates. Here you'll get a gun pirate on this limb early on, and there'll be a cage slash bonus area if you climb onto it to kill him. Grab Tinkerbell, and then roll the cannonball to wipe out this fat pirate up ahead. Take the food bag here, fly over the fire, and climb the tree to take down the gun pirate, and right after is another gun pirate and food bag up here. Kill the fat pirate up here in this tree, pick up Tink, and then there's another gun pirate up in this tree. Take out the buzzard first so you're not having to deal with both at the same time and be ready to quickly evade the dropping spiders. Another gun pirate at ground level, then one more along these mushrooms, and there's some more food at the top of this tree. Fly over the fire, and Captain Hook is shuffling around right after that. Slice him up and exit the stage. Stage 4 has 12 pirates to take down this time. Fly over this little gap in the ground to get the chest, and you'll meet a gun pirate up here along with a bat. Take them both down, take the Tinkerbell, and there's a fat pirate lurking below. Grab the food bag here, just watch out for the cannon right in front of it. Dodge a cannonball before slipping in. 
avoid all the bullshit that falls from the ceiling, slash up the gun pirate, and roll the cannon into the gun pirate across the way. Fly up here to take down the gun pirate and a bat, and fly across here to get the food bag if you need it. Take out the bat that flies from up here, and then kill the gun pirate across the way. Just be on the lookout for the cannon above, get past it quickly. Tinkerbell will make another appearance, take her, and then kill the fat pirate on the ground, and climb up here for a cage bonus area. There are more cannons ahead after that, and another gun pirate. Slash him up, and kill the bat that follows him. Kill the fat pirate, and be careful jumping onto the small platform before taking on the next gun pirate you just might want to fly over instead. Then you've got a shit ton of cannons. Wait for the opening right after they fire to climb up and grab the chests, but only if you need the health. Right after that is Captain Hook, slash him and exit the stage. The fifth stage is the first of the repeat stages. It's basically the exact same thing as stage one, except the colors are mostly blue now. There are a couple minor adjustments, like the bonus area is shifted over like five feet, and an item or a pirate here and there gets relocated to a slightly different spot, and Wendy isn't there this time. But for the most part, everything is the same. Nine pirates, all mostly in the same spots, approach it exactly the same way you did before. Stage 6 is another repeat, this time of Stage 2. Again, nothing has changed except for some minor tweaking, and the colors have changed. This time everything is red. In Stage 7, we get a change of scenery and a new music track, Holy shit. Now you're on the Jelly Roger, so you'd think that this is the last stage, but it's actually not. Now the thing you've got to keep in mind is that some areas may seem accessible, but they're not. Like with these stairs, it looks like you should be able to walk past them to this food bag, like you would be able to in, say, Popeye. But you can't. You'll be forced to walk up the stairs. So you'll have to fly down, or take a long way in other examples. Actually, this isn't just one ship, there are a series of them in a convoy, so you'll have to traverse from one ship to the next, sometimes by flight. There are 13 pirates in the stage, the first is a fatty down here. Take him out, grab Tinkerbell, and roll the ball up here into the pirate across the way before heading to the next ship. Then slip down onto the next ship to kill this gun pirate, and here's the example of the whole bait and switch with the stairs. Fly down to get the bag and fly out. Next ship has two pirates, a gunner up top, and a fat one on the bottom. Take out the gunner first so he's not firing at you from above. Fly across to the next ship, and you've got two gunners, plus a buzzer to make things annoying. Fly up top to take them both out, then on the small boat is a fat pirate. Kill him, and then you'll get a bonus area cage right after. Fly up and over to the next ship, get high to avoid the cannon, and to kill the gun pirate that resides up top. There's also one down below and some chests. Another small boat with a fat dude. Kill him, take the food, and fly across to the next ship where you'll get another gunman. Kill him, and fly to the next ship where several cannons reside at the bottom. So get up top to avoid them easier, drop down at the end, and take out Captain Hook on your way to the exit. Stage 8 is, well, it looks like the same level again because we're still on a convoy of pirate ships and the music is exactly the same and we've had repeat levels before, but this time it's actually a whole different level. But there are 13 pirates to take down again. The first is one of the fat ones down here hiding behind the stairs. Wipe them out, take Tinkerbell, fly up here and send this ball rolling into the gun pirate on the next ship. There's another gun pirate on the next ship, and a food bag can be obtained in another one of these hidden behind the stairs areas you have to fly to. Fly to the next ship, and you've got a fatty at the bottom, a gunner at the top, and a buzzard in the middle. Get rid of them, and fly high to the next ship where two gunners are hanging out. After disposing of them, drop down for a food bag, and the small boat right after has a fat pirate with a cannon you have to deal with. Quickly take him out and fly onto the next ship, which has a cannon on the front and two gun pirates, one way up top and the other down below. Kill them, collect all the chests, and fly on ahead to the small boat with a fat pirate. Kill him and take the food bag before flying to the next ship, 
which has a gun pirate in the middle. Only one more pirate left, and we know who that is. Hook is waiting at the end of the next ship. Just watch out for the cannonballs that fire at you. Grab the food bag down here, take out the dear captain, and you finish the stage. The ninth stage is also a convoy of pirate ships with the exact same music, but this time it really is the final level, and there are only 12 pirates this time. First ship has some cannons. Avoid the cannonballs and roll this ball into the gun pirate on the next ship while grabbing the food bag and Tinkerbell. Drop down and kill the fat guy, and then on the next ship you've got another fat pirate in the middle and a gunman up top. Fly up and kill him. Fly to the next ship and kill the gun pirates, one in the middle and the other at the top, and take the food bag at the bottom. Fly onto the next ship, stay up high to avoid the cannonballs, and to line yourself up with the two fat pirates that hang out up here. Take them out, continue forward, wipe out the gun pirate, continue on, and you've got another variety package. A gunman in the middle, and a heavy set pirate up top. There's only one pirate left, so Captain Hook is single-handedly running the ship. Avoid the cannonballs, and the final showdown is just ahead. This time though, you have to make him walk the plank. It's just a button mash. Get in front of him and spam the fuck out of the B button to send him back. Hopefully you've stocked up on health, cause coming in on a low tank is the one thing that can bite you in the ass, other than simply not being able to push the button at a fairly rapid rate. After finally sending him overboard, you win. That's what Peter Pan says. He wins, and he has fun being Peter Pan. I'll say he's having fun. Look at his fucking eyes. The kid's high as a kite. Anyway, that's all you get. This screen with the same title music and some fireworks. An underwhelming ending to a very underwhelming game. And that wraps up this edition of Aqualung's Game Reviews. See you next time.